We are a consortium of Earth observation specialists working for the European Space Agency. The framework in which we operate is twofold. The first guiding principle is the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal 11. Make cities and human settlements inclusive, safe, resilient and sustainable. The second framework is the project implementation strategy in international financing institutions like the World Bank and other development banks. Our aim is to extend and improve the use of satellite data for the monitoring of indicators in order to reach sustainable development goal number 11. We also want to facilitate international development work in a globally consistent manner by using Earth observation data and methods. We have covered 32 cities around the globe with a total of more than 510 products and 11,000 square kilometers mapped. Our basic products comprise status and evolution of urban extent as well as land use and land cover and its change over time. More specifically, targeted maps include slum maps, maps of open and green spaces, building footprints and heights, infrastructure, as well as hazard and risk maps. Based on these maps, we generate spatial analytics and the before mentioned indicators for SDG 11. These tools are uh, very much uh, relevant because they provide evidence. In general, the preparations of bank operations take several years, but in these cases, it only took around six to eight months for the preparation. It's thanks to the whole analytics, maps, and data evidences. The best part is that it was helpful to communicate with various stakeholders on the ground. We have two speakers today. Um, both are from GAF AG in Munich, in Germany. Uh, Amelie Prostzeit, she's an urban remote sensing specialist. And Andreas Utenthaler is as well um, a specialist in urban remote sensing with uh, specific uh, on 3D reconstruction. And Amelie will give you um, an object, the objectives of this training, a bit on the background and challenges which we faced in this use case. Um, then um, what the urban product, products which can be used for this taxation modeling and a short introduction in the building height product. And then uh, Andreas will go into detail on the methodology, how to derive digital surface models and 3D models for this purpose. And then Amelie will take over again on the pilot study and conclusions. Okay, uh, with this, I will hand over to Amelie for her presentation. And um, dear all, welcome to this uh, week's webinar. My name is Amelie Brustzeit, and as Manuela already said, I will lead you to the first part of the webinar and the last part. Before I start with the context, I'd like to give a short overview on the structure of the webinar. I start with the objective of the webinar and give a short background introduction on property taxes and the involved challenges. Then before we come to the World Bank pilot study on Kigali, I like to give a short overview over the EU Forestry Urban Project. And then Andreas Utenthaler introduces the products, building footprints and elevation models. With this information, I like to show the objectives and results achieved within the pilot study for Kigali. And at the end of the webinar, you can ask all your upcoming questions. The objective of the training is to demonstrate the utility of remote sensing data via the use of 3D building height data and building footprints to support land property valuation and related updating tax registers. The webinar shows in a pilot study conducted by the World Bank how high precision building height and build up area together with, with land re registry or survey data on property prices can be used to develop a computer assisted mass valuation model for property taxation. Um, it helps to quickly assess tax collection potential of cities and urban centers, particularly in developing countries with limited information. Overall, it will thus help to avoid costly and time consuming data collection efforts on property characteristics. However, I will come back to the study again later. 
To start with, let's get an overview over land and property taxes and their challenges in performance. Taxes on land and property are one of the most important sources of own revenue for local governments around the world. Most of the resulting benefits of poverty tax will be capitalized in land values. Um, therefore, taxes on real property have been identified as a highly inventive, com compatible way to finance local services and inf infrastructure. Even thought the property tax poses several characteristics that are desirable in the context of sub-national government finance. In practice, the property tax, especially in developing countries, struggle to produce any significant amount of revenue from this tax source. The main reasons why property taxes not work so well in developing countries are the lack of administrative capacity at the local level, including the valuation of a property, the billing, the collection and the enforcement of the tax. The high fixed costs of establishing and ensuring currency of the associated valuation infrastructure and collection system and the difficulties of conducting counterfactual analysis. Further, many exemptions exist, making it also harder to see all the benefits from a property tax system. Further, in many developing countries, the property market is not well developed, meaning that maps to identify taxable properties are very often incomplete, they are out of date, and access to them is fragmented between government units. It is therefore not uncommon to find that only less than 50% of taxable properties are on the tax rolls. So how can property tax now be reformed to increase the revenue of a country? Following requirements, they are not exhaustive, are needed for a successful property tax collection. First of all, a coverage with digital catastrophe maps is needed. Um, so far, at the moment, only 5% of African and South Asian countries, where most of the expected searches in urban population will be concentrated, have digital catastrophe records, even for the main cities. For those countries, the use of digital products based on remote sensing imagery can be transformational, opening new avenues for collecting local revenue and also helping to clarify and realize other benefits from documenting ownership rights. Another important requirement is the collection in a low-cost way that is fair, progressively linked to property values and buy-earned. It is also needed to have a complete property identification in a frequency of three to ten years. Further, local governments should have the capacities to implement new structures. And finally, um, automated valuation methods based on market values, which are updated routinely without a danger of triggering would be needed. Only by implementing automated processes and the use of new technology, the revenue from pro property taxes can be increased. One solution is the use of remote sensing data which can be significantly reduce the cost of establishing and updating tax registers. The information of building footprints and height derived from remote sensing data allows the exact definition of build up area and therefore also allow the assessment of the completeness of existing tax maps, especially for areas with, with recent urbanization where tax rolls are no longer current. Uh, this information, together with information on sale prices from the land registry, targeted surveys and routine statistical data, makes it possible to use math valuation procedures to generate tax maps. This was successfully tested within the World Bank study in Kigali, Rwanda, to which I will come back to later after a short introduction about the EU Forest the Urban Project. Earth Observation for Sustainable Development for Urban Areas, that's the, the name for the EU Forestry Urban Project, was initiated in May 2016 and is supported by the European Space Agency. The objectives are to improve the understanding of EO applications for urban development with multilateral development banks and with developing countries. It's also important to mainstream 
EO applications in an operational manner into development programs. The project is implemented by a consortium where the lead company is GAFAG and um, the partner companies are Sears and Aegis from France, GSAT from Czech Republic, ELA from Germany as well, NIO from the Netherlands, Uranium Research from Austria and Gizbox from Romania. All these products, which you can see here on the slide, can be produced within the frame of the eo 4 Urban Pro Project. All products are produced based on very high and high resolution satellite data. The data is in a first step pre-processed. This means that all atmospheric influences were minimized and the image is geometrically corrected. Based on this image and with the help of ancillary data, a semi-automatic classification in the core and peri-urban area is conducted to generate the baseline land use land cover classification. Based on this classification, a series of products can be produced. All products which are produced and defined within the EU for the urban project are based on specific user requirements. They are tailored for urban sustainable development support. They all have harmonized product specifications. They are all produced according to standardized standardized state-of-the-art methodology. They follow stringent quality control procedures and they all come along with a comprehensive and transparent documentation in form of city operational reports. To support the property tax system, um, building footprints and building height information can be generated with very high resolution satellite data. Therefore, a more detailed technical description will be provided on the next slides on building footprints and elevation products by Andreas. My name is Andreas Uttenthaler and I'm responsible at GAF for uh, digital elevation models and not only for digital elevation models, but also for 3D uh, products that are derived. So the base data for those elevation models, the base data for elevation models um, is coming from different approaches. So uh, on the one hand, we have um, the opportunity to collect uh, satellite images, stereo satellite images on a regular basis. These are mostly high resolution satellites with uh, two uh, meter resolution approximately. But the more, more uh, interesting uh, systems, satellites are the very high resolution satellites, which are very much capable to acquire multi-stereo images within one single pass. That means with on, uh, one single time frame. So um, as you can see here, mainly for urban areas, it's very much needed that um, you have at least a three stereo co collection. So that means one forward image, one Nadia image and one backward image. So this is um, carried out for the minimization of shadow effects. So when you're using tree stereo collections, you have more detailed and more accurate digital surface model for further analysis. So the workflow, when we are having those uh, tree stereo images, we are generating a digital surface model out of it. So all of the structures, buildings, uh, vegetation, everything is included in the digital surface model. And this has a resolution of between 30 centimeter and 50 centimeter, all based on satellite images. Additionally to this digital surface model, we are also generating this ortho image from Nadia image to carry out further analysis. So in this case, for example, you can also generate an NDVI. This is a vegetation index uh, where you can detect uh, vegetated areas inside the data. The DSM, the surface model I mentioned before, is with, with uh, buildings and vegetation inside. And based on this digital surface model, we can generate a digital terrain model. The digital terrain model is without any structures and um, therefore is also very much necessary for many different applications. And uh, as a combination of both layers, digital surface model minus digital terrain model, you can generate a normalized uh, 
digital surface model that is um, consisting of the relative heights of buildings and also of vegetation at this time. So for this, to remove the vegetation from this uh, uh, NDSM, because vegetation is very often not needed for, for, um, for especially for, for building footprints and so on, uh, we can remove those uh, areas uh, by using this uh, vegetation index. And then we are able to derive as a combination of the of a classification of the NDSM and the NDVI, this building footprint layer. So this approach is very useful in many cities, but in some cities uh, where the density of the, of the building is higher, we are using also different approaches to generate these building footprints uh, with morphological image um, filter methods or classification methods. And uh, also sometimes object-based image classification methods are necessary. So this building footprint uh, product is part of this whole elevation product. Going to the next slide, you can see the specifications of these very high resolution elevation models. As I mentioned before, we have one with 30 centimeter and 50 centimeter, depending always on the source data. So we have uh, source data from different satellite data providers, um, can be either from Worldview, uh, GUI from Digital Globe, for example, or PlayArts from Airbus. The accuracy without ground control information is horizontally better than 2.5 meters and vertically absolutely is better than three meters. With ground control information, this can be significantly improved. So now I want to show you a little showcase um, about the generation of a digital surface model from Istanbul. So Istanbul is a huge city with a very large area, very uh, dense building uh, density. And um, we had a customer inquiry with an AOI from area of interest from 1000 square kilometers. And there was no suitable data available over this area of interest. Then we did together with the satellite data provider, a triple stereo acquisition within a very short time frame. So there was a very tough time frame um, needed from the customer. This is just to show you how agile uh, satellites can be. So in this case, the Worldview 2 satellite was uh, acquiring images, a triple stereo image from the, eastern, uh, from the Western part of Istanbul on the 27th of July, 2015. And three days later, on the 13th July of 20, uh, 2015, um, they did a tree, double tree stereo tasking to cover the rest of the AOI, so the central part and the eastern part with suitable tree stereo satellite images, in this case with 50 centimeter. So this is, was quite an impressive example of how agile and how fast information can be generated from satellites everywhere on the world. <clears throat> and this, you can see here, this is the completely generated digital surface model. So this takes approximately three to four days or five days, let's say, for the generation of a digital surface model. And then further um, editing steps, manual quality control steps are carried out to, uh, uh, to improve the, the quality additionally um, for, the, for the customer. This is another uh, example for a project that was carried out last year for the European Commission, the European Environmental Agency and ESA. Uh, it is called the Urban Atlas 3D project. In this case, we have generated building block heights for 31 metropolitan areas within the European Union and EFTA countries in Europe. So this is um, a kind of uh, height information summarized for building blocks. It's not on a, on a single building level, it's more on a building block level. So this can be done, for example, for larger metropolitan areas uh, where the acquisition of very high resolution data can be maybe problematic because it's then uh, it's then is time needed and uh, it's more expensive than this product. What 
typical urban parameters can be derived from elevation models based on satellite data, here in this case from Beijing. Here you can see the surface model. Here are different parameters that are either calculated on the basis of the satellite image, of the multispectral satellite images, or on the digital surface model and other elevation models. So classica, uh, classically, you can calculate the building heights from the normalized digital surface model. You can calculate the population density. You can generate uh, layers of, of ceiling. Um, you can also, we are, what we are also doing is hydrological network generation uh, within the digital elevation model. Information on the green area ratio and, and so on and so forth. So you can see there are many possibilities, uh, many ratios, many um, indices that can be generated on the basis of satellite based products. So to sum it up, the standardized digital elevation models and the corresponding 3D information are important for various applications that are especially important for cities that are, for example, prone to disaster, to natural disasters. It provides supporting information for disaster risk reduction. So you can do flood risk modeling, you can do vulnerability mapping of certain areas, and you can use the data also in the event of emergency cases directly. Then, um, which is the major topic today, elevation models and derived products are needed for urban planning. Assessment of pro property taxes, for example, you can calculate different ratios and so on. You can also use the elevation models to support population estimation. You have the building height information and you can also use it as input for the population density calculations. What is also important to visualize 3D change, changes in urban areas and to do some simulations for future um, events, for example. And another uh, important thing is to, uh, uh, to do mission planning. Um, just to sum up the advantages um, that are having the uh, satellite-based uh, digital elevation models. So with the very high resolution uh, elevation models, you can do many analysis for urban core areas. With high resolution, that means from two to 10 meters maybe, you can do analysis also for the peri-urban areas and for a larger scale um, analysis. In combination with ground roof data that is uh, often available also for cities, you can significantly improve the accuracy of the, of the data. The, as, as we are always using satellite images, these results are reproducible, reliable and worldwide applicable. So we do not have any restrictions with satellite images that are uh, maybe with uh, that are maybe happening with other systems in the future in the next years in the upcoming years new year, uh, years we will ha also have additional satellite systems with 30 centimeter or even better resolution that can also help to improve further analysis and um, and uh, products in the urban context and for for sure there will be new visualization, processing, and dissemination opportunities. This is spe specifically, um, I'm, I'm meaning with this, certain platforms where uh, users can um, disseminate the data or visualize the data uh, on the platform uh, online, like the Mundi web service. So now I want to once again hand over to Amelie. Thank you, Andreas and Manuela. I now come to another application of building high data. The specific application I'm talking about is the integration of remote sensing into property tax modeling, which was undertaken in a pilot study of the World Bank Development Economic Research Group, which is supporting the Rwandan government to improve the methods of land valuation. Kigali was chosen as Rwanda is the only African country that has established so far a complete and fully digital legal catastrophe. On the right, you can see the area of interest for the study, Kigali and the surrounding areas. 
On the left, you can find the title and the link to the World Bank pilot study. The objective of the pilot study was to assess methods using actual land transaction data from the country with the land cadastral map and basic building height data derived from EO data to simulate different property values and related tax rates. The building heights data were needed as mostly property registries does not contain data on many building characteristics, characteristics which is needed for a mass valuation exercise. Here for EO derived building height data with 50 centimeter spatial resolution was provided to the World Bank team and was overlaid on available digital spatial cadastral data provided by the Rwandan government. On the image here, you can see building footprints over an area in Kigali. The building footprints have a high attribute attached, which show that the orange and red buildings are higher than the green buildings. This means that data on land prices, together with spatial data on buildings and building heights, can be used to perform routine processes of computer-assisted mass appraisal, in short, karma. Input values for land and property from this model together with administrative records on taxes collected on individual properties allow to provide information on potential revenue gains from full collection of current lease fees, um, the likely yield from and incidence of a uniformly applied 1% tax on residential land and property, and the implicit cost of exemptions currently being discussed by Rwandan policymakers. A detailed description of the model and how it works is explained in the World Bank paper, which I referenced on the slide before. Please refer to the paper for more information on the model. This image here shows an area of the inner city of Kigali with different building footprints and the high attributes um, attached. The data can be also visualized uh, like this in 3D. And the ODRIVE building heights show a very high concurrence with the cadastral data from the government. So far, the data and the Karma model was tested for Kigali and the results published by the World Bank in 2018. The work can be replicated to any other place as long as digital cadastral data is available. The pilot study for Kigali illustrates that high resolution remotely sensed imagery can be used to reliably check the completeness of valuation roles and if data on land values are available, also run land valuation models at a fraction of the time and resources required by more traditional technologies. Especially with the current urbanization, the city's competitiveness increasingly depends on its ability to address these urbanization problems by planning ahead and raising the revenue needed to provide services effectively. With this methodology, a country can move towards an electronic land transaction billing system and a relevant land tax taxation system and will therefore assist the country in improving its total revenue capture. And as stated in the World Bank Policy Research Paper, this method can enable cities in developing countries to augment the financial resources at their disposal, lessening dependency on central transfer enhancing their service quality, and possibly also helping to ensure currency of property registries to make private property rights more secure. Thank you for your attention. And while we now answer all your upcoming questions, um, which you can type in the question box on your screen, we like to show a 3D flight over Kigali. Thank you. Okay, so thank you, Amelie.